hot well it actually okay it has been a hot minute since I last uploaded a personal paranormal story time recently I've actually been getting a ton of requests from you guys to bring back where I tell story times of personal paranormal experiences and paranormal things that have happened to me directly and honestly to be completely transparent and honest with you guys for a while now, I haven't had many stories besides stories of things that happened like in the haunted house that I wanna tell come October because the apartment that I live in right now and I am super thankful for it is just not haunted. Like there is just nothing but good energy here in my condo, which I super appreciate. I am by no means saying that I wish it was haunted. I definitely do not. But because I spend so much time in my condo and I spend so much time filming videos in here, I haven't had a ton of recent paranormal experiences on my own because I haven't been going out to explore up until recently. Like recently was when I really started getting back into my paranormal investigations. However, recently on a trip to LA, I stayed in an Airbnb that was so haunted and so many strange things happened in the span of time of us staying there for a week that I felt like it'd be a really fun time to just sit here and share it with you guys, story time style, just tell it to you like I would tell it to my friends here in my day-to-day -day life. And so that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. On that note, if by some chance you are new to my channel, I would really, really appreciate if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button because we are exactly one month away from 31 days of Halloween, which is where I upload a new video every single day for the month of October for 31 days straight. And then come December, we have 25 days of Reesmas, which is where for 25 days straight, I upload every single day in December. And between then, I plan on uploading a ton of videos as well. So now is the perfect time with spooky season here to join the Reese's Pieces. But without further ado, let's just dive right on into this story time. I'm really excited. So recently, I had a pretty cool opportunity that presented where I was able to go out to LA and discuss a top secret project that you guys will be so excited about when the time comes for me to reveal it. But I ended up bringing along with me Mama Reese and Sarah. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, you might not know this, but for those of you who have been here, especially for the past two 31 days of Halloween, you guys know that I often ghost hunt with my mom and my mom's cousin, so my second cousin, Sarah. And so we all got together, we all went out to LA, we had these incredible meetings, but we couldn't help but notice that the Airbnb we were staying in had some really strange activity surrounding it. Essentially, when we first checked into the space, it felt like a very, very dark space. And initially, I kind of blamed it on the lighting because for me, I really like cool toned lighting. I feel like when you have bright white lights in a space, it just brings the energy up, makes me feel more positive, makes me feel more excited, and just makes me wake up excited to start my day, which might sound super strange to somebody who doesn't really take in lighting like that. But for me personally, I dream of a home with tons of windows because natural lighting is very bright and light and just doesn't make it feel heavy. And this Airbnb had a very heavy, darker, like a very dark yellow tone to the lighting in it. And on top of that, there was very few windows. If not, I think there was the sliding doors, one window in the kitchen and one window in the bedroom and that was it. So like sliding doors and then two windows in the whole space. So it was a very, very dark space. And so initially, the feeling that I had when I came into the space that was like, oof, it's kind of heavy in here. It's kind of like there's something here. I completely blamed on the poor lighting. In fact, this is terrible because it's not my space and I shouldn't have thought like this, but I almost wanted to switch out her bulbs because I was like, I can't wake up to this lighting for a week, but I didn't do that. I thought that'd be rather disrespectful. So we're in the space and the first thing that we start to notice is that whenever we talk like, negatively of the space, 
the fridge door would open. And this sounds so strange, and honestly, to this very moment here right now, like, I'm like, this is such a strange thing to take note of, but there were a couple of little things that I was not even complaining about, just like, bringing note of. You know, when you're paying to stay in a space, you kind of have a certain standard, and I'm not even speaking of, like, high expectations, but you kind of just have this certain standard of how you expect the space to be. And initially I made the comment about the lighting and it was so strange because I came in and I was like, woo, this lighting, like we need to work on this. Like let's open up some blinds. Let's make it feel happy and positive in here. And as I said that and I went into the kitchen to go see if I could open up some blinds or something, the fridge door opens. But I didn't actually see the fridge door open. It was more so that like I was turned this way and when I turned back around, the fridge was now open. Now, very important to note with this is that the fridge door was closed when I walked into the space and there was no like gust of wind. There was no bumping into it. There was no none of that. But I blamed that on the fact that it's probably a finicky fridge. I know that sometimes when I place things wrong in my freezer, my freezer door won't stay closed, obviously. So. I opened it up, I looked inside, there was nothing that was like blocking it, and the thing that I took note of was that it had great suction, like the fridge was a good fridge. It was like, you closed it, and if you kind of like nudged on it or tugged on it, I guess, it wouldn't open up or anything. So it was like a secured fridge. Shortly after this, we kind of took note of that the floors hadn't been like mopped or anything, because the bottoms of our feet were turning <laughs> Oh, it's so gross. I don't want to sound like a complainer, but like the bottoms of our feet were turning black very quickly. Like it was like our feet were clean when we went in and they were turning black. And so Sarah's like, oh, I don't think it's been mopped because look at my feet and her feet were like pitch black. And then all of a sudden when we went back into the kitchen, <laughs> the fridge door was open. And I was like, okay, this is beyond strange. Like. It was just odd that every time we would talk like negatively of the house or say something about the space, the fridge door would open. So it was almost like maybe something wanted its presence known, but again, we thought something was up in the, uh, something was up with the fridge. <laughs> so Sarah went this time to like test out the fridge because I explained to her that that had happened to me already as I hadn't told her that because it seemed insignificant to me. And she too tests the fridge and she's like, well, it's got great suction, like it's a good fridge. So we move on from that. Now, we had just arrived to the space, like I said, and I'd opened up my luggage because we were gonna get changed out of like our airport clothes into just like some chill clothes to go and grab a bite to eat somewhere. And I had just purchased this super cute makeup bag and I was so excited to show Sarah it because I felt like I got such a good deal on it and that it was really adorable and super productive and just like really good. So, <laughs> I pull it out of my suitcase and I open up the like travel makeup case and I'm like look it has this compartment and it has this and it has this and nothing was amiss. In fact Sarah had grabbed it from me, looked at it as well and was like oh I wonder if they'll have one when we get back home. Zip it on up, set it nicely in my suitcase and go out to eat. I didn't end up opening my makeup again that night because we got back, we decided to go for a hot tub, then I showered, washed off my makeup, got into my PJs and climbed into bed. Like there was no exchange with that makeup case <laughs> again until the following morning when I decided obviously I was gonna do my makeup. And I open up my uh, makeup case and right away this like glass bottle of like this MAC I don't even know what it is really or how to describe it. It was like just this thing that I like to put on under my makeup. It was almost like a, kind of like the MAC strobe cream. Is it strobe cream? I don't know, whatever. Kind of like the MAC, like shiny, like I don't know guys, I'm not a beauty guru. Um, Whatever it was, it was like a cream that had like a nice glow to it and you would put it under, but it wasn't a primer or anything like that. Anyways, it had completely shattered in my makeup bag and the product was all over everything like all up in my brand new makeup case all up in all my other makeup like all in everything and what was super weird about this was that the only exchange that i'd had with it was when i'd opened it up for sarah and then i'd put it back into my luggage and left it and 
moved on. It was never touched again. Nothing was dropped near it. There was no explanation for it. Had I not have opened it to show Sarah, I would have assumed that during travel something had happened and it had like been hit or dropped or whatever and shattered, but it was just really, really strange. But again, I was like, eh, didn't think anything of it. I was just like, what the heck happened to that? I was more so annoyed that we had to go through and clean every single product and like clean out my brand new makeup thing than anything else. So this is where things get really weird guys. Like this whole story is weird and it's not gonna make much sense, but it's an interesting story time nonetheless. So around this time we had got bottles of water and we had these bottles of water that we could just like grab and go on the go with. And so I had had probably around this time one or two bottles of water total. And same type of idea for mom and Sarah. And all of a sudden these water bottles are appearing in like the strangest of places. Like a water bottle on the back of a toilet seat, a water bottle like here, a water bottle there. And finally we all said to each other, who is leaving water bottles that are either like slightly drank or completely full all around this space? And none of us said that it was any of us. I knew that it wasn't me and they said that it wasn't them. So we decided that we should like mark or tear or rip a water bottle that one of us grabbed so that we know number one that it's somebody's and number two we can like crack the mystery of the water bottles. And so we all kind of are like taking these water bottles and like marking them or like pulling the label off of them or whatever. And this goes well for like a whole day or two. And then all of a sudden we go out again and when we come back, water bottles are literally everywhere again. And we're like, what in the heck? And at this moment, I looked at my mom and I looked at Sarah and I was like, okay, that's it. This place is haunted. And right at that moment, the fridge door pops open. Like, like something out of a film. Like it was comedic timing. It was like, that's it. The place is haunted. And the fridge door just goes whoop, open. The fridge door that doesn't do it any other time unless you're talking about the place or you're mentioning that it's haunted because multiple times throughout the rest of the week that we would say it was haunted, the fridge door would be found open. So at this point, I'm telling them, you know what? I'm like 99% sure this presence just wants to make itself known. And Sarah mentions, cause she's a super light sleeper that multiple times throughout the night, she would like hear like scratching and knocking on the door, on the doors, on the walls, and that she would like see things in her peripheral vision, but she didn't think anything of it. Like, no, neither my mom nor Sarah are the type of people that like make something out of nothing. So she was like, maybe it is haunted. And so I had decided that we were gonna do a spirit box session and film it to show you guys. Around this time was a very important, very special meeting. And a couple days prior to what I'm about to tell you guys about now, I had purchased a like magic candle and it's just like a good luck, good vibes, positive candle from a crystal shop. And essentially this candle was for new beginnings, positivity, um, what was the rest? Oh, success, just like all these positive things that you want. And they said essentially to burn the candle for like multiple days. So next to the couch, like directly next to it, I had this candle burning for like two days straight, which I know sounds so dangerous, but that's what they told me to do. And I assumed since it was like a really popular shop that this was like standard. So we get out the spirit box and we decide to start filming the spirit box session. And I started saying basically out loud that I felt as though something was here that wanted to make its presence known and it was able to use the spirit box in order to communicate with us and nothing. Like zero, zip, nada. I start thinking to myself, all right, the fridge is finicky. It's got good grip, but it releases easily. And you know, the tapping and scratching on the walls is like probably something in the walls. And my broken makeup thing is probably just broken makeup. And Sarah seeing shadows is probably just her imagination because nothing is coming through the spirit box. And we sit there and we sit there and we sit there. Five minutes goes by, 10 minutes goes by. Almost 15 minutes goes by and I turn to my mom and Sarah and I'm like, I'm just gonna shut it off. And right at that second that I shut off the camera but the spirit box was still on, the only word that comes through is couch. Now normally I'd be like, oh, isn't that convenient? I filmed for almost 15 minutes and nothing came through and the minute my camera's off and I'm about to shut the spirit box off, it wants to say couch. But I took it as maybe it just wants to talk when we're sitting near the couch. 
So I was super eager about that. I was excited. I was like, we're going to communicate. It's number one, going to be really cool to hear why this, whatever it is, has been trying to get our attention. And number two, it's going to make for a great video. So I set up the camera next to the couch and I set up the spirit box and we're there and we're listening and nothing, 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 nothing. And while I'm sitting there and nothing, 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 nothing is coming through, my eyes start to wander and I start to get a little bit like, oh, okay, this is like a flunk. Like there's nothing here. And my eyes are like skimming across the couch and my eyes reach that candle. And I'm like, wait, what is on the candle? And so I get up and I shut off the camera and I shut off the spirit box and I'm looking at the candle and the candle that was like, so the, the candle was like a tall, like round candle the candle that was like down to here now um there was like a label on the front of it that says like success and ambition and all the things that you want from the candle <clears throat> excuse me one sec oh i just started choking there <laughs> the candle that has like this sticker on the outer side of it that like says what the candle is and we're not talking like a sticker that you're supposed to remove once you purchase it like it's like in not in the candle but it's like really on there like it's supposed to stay on while you burn it it is pretty much smoking and the candle wick has now moved over to that side of like the candle and is like completely up against the glass and the glass is completely black and the actual like label is like burnt. Like as though you took a lighter to a piece of paper and let it burn, it's like burnt and there's like smoke pretty much coming off of it. And at this moment in time, I start freaking out. We basically put out the candle. We're like, thank you, thank you, thank you blow out the candle and we're examining it and it is so hot that you can't even like touch it like that. Like it is so hot and a complete fire hazard. Like I don't know if glass can just explode from things like that. Like I don't know if it would have caught fire but all I know is that had I not have done the spirit box session and went over to the couch and had like nothing was coming through so my eyes were wandering and I was paying attention to things that I kind of just like left in the background and noticed that. So either way I was like you know I feel like there's something here. I feel like there's like an entity and energy. I just feel it. And maybe it wanted me to not burn the actual person's house down. <laughs> oh, I don't even know why I'm laughing. It's super not funny. Other than that, strange things kept happening for the remainder of the week. I actually woke up in the night and thought I saw Sarah standing over where I was sleeping. And after like I rubbed my eyes and everything, she wasn't there. In fact, everybody was sound asleep. A lot of strange things kept on happening. We continuously were like testing to see when the fridge door would open and it would always open like when we would talk about certain things. It was a super strange week, but either way, I am just so appreciative and so thankful that I caught a glimpse of that candle and nothing happened. Either way, whenever I do spirit box sessions and nothing comes through, I just get all the more appreciative for all the times that I actually make great contact with the spirit box and get a lot of answers that are direct to the question that I asked. So this was one of those times I am not even going to post the footage because there's nothing. It's probably like 35 minutes of absolutely nothing. And then the only thing that would even like coincide with my story here and show you guys that my story is true is that you just see me go and shut the camera off and that is literally it. We got nothing on camera, we got nothing good, other than the fact that I did have my mom film because I was gonna insert it if um, the spirit box and that whole video actually worked out. I was gonna insert a clip of my exploded makeup, but other than that, that is a story time of the time recently that we stayed in an Airbnb and a whole lot of nothing but a whole lot of crazy took place and I thought that maybe you guys would want to spend today or tonight just listening to my experience. Well you guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I've missed sharing my own experiences. I am super excited for October because I'm going to be sharing more haunted house stories. I have saved them all year for spooky season, so I'm really, really excited. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I really appreciate to see that you guys enjoy my content, and make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed and you do enjoy my videos, because we would love to have you here in the Reese's Pieces. 
Remember, my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you guys.